In this Algebra 1 video, we're in Chapter 4, Lesson 1. We're going to talk about graphing equations and slope-intercept form. That's y equals mx plus b. Our objective is, as the student, I can write and graph linear equations in slope-intercept form, and I can model real-world data in situations with equations in slope-intercept form because I will identify, label, and apply what I've learned about slope and the y-intercept. That's what we're going to be talking about. Um, and one of the forms of linear equations that we've mentioned in a past video, there's three main forms. One of the biggest and most popular ones, and the easiest one, one for us to graph, is slope-intercept form. And slope-intercept form, you're always, it's always going to have the formula of y equals mx plus b. m is going to be whatever's in front of x, and b is going to be whatever constant number, I mean the thing without a variable, is off by itself. This can say minus b, it can say plus b, um, m can be a positive number, m can be a negative number, m, can, m will usually be a fraction, such as the example right below it. So as an example of slope-intercept of slope form, y equals 2 thirds x plus 1. That means the slope, since we just said m, the number in front of x, is, the, is 2 thirds. So in, the, in, our, in this example, slope would be 2 over 3. And just to remind you, that means it goes up 2, and then it goes over 3. That's what that slope means. Because it's positive, that's how we go up. We, it goes up, and it always goes to the right, because that's how we look at slope. And then our y-intercept is the item all by itself. In this case, it's plus 1, so that means it's positive 1. So our y-intercept is positive 1. If by some chance this had said subtract 1, that means our y-intercept would have been negative 1. So let's take a moment to look at what this means when graphing or when looking at a graph. Let's graph this example. So you don't have to write, again, what I have at the top. But basically, I just wrote the same equation again, but we're going to see what does it take to graph it. The steps that you need for graphing, the steps are going to be, step one, graph the y-intercept. Meaning, when you look at this equation, look at the number that's over here all by itself. If it's plus, that means it's positive. If it's minus, that means it's negative. It says plus one. So that means our y-intercept is plus 1. So that means, go, remember, y-intercept means where does it cross the y-axis. And as a reminder, this is the y-axis. So if the y-intercept is 1, that means that the y-value of positive 1, so right there, that's where it crosses the y-axis. So put a dot there. That is the y-intercept of our line. That is where our line, I'm just going to draw a quick sketch, that's where our line, actually came out almost pretty good, that's where our line is going to cross the y-axis, although that was a little crooked. But essentially... I want you to know that's what that means. So your first step is graph the y-intercept, okay? Now the second step is important. This is a common mistake students make. So follow me here. It says graph the slope, but here's the big, here's the big finisher that people always mess up, from the y-intercept. Here's what people normally do. This is wrong. Don't write this. What people normally do is they go from the origin, and they go up to 1, 2, over 3, and they put a dot right there. So they normally do this. They're like, yay, I'm done. I graphed the slope. But here's the key they forgot. They forgot from the y-intercept. I'm saying that, and it sounds kind of silly because I mean it. That's the biggest mistake the students make when doing this, so I'm going to help you avoid it. So here's what you do. From the y-intercept, meaning from right there, you're going to go up 2 over 3. Okay, so 1, 2 over 3, 1, 2, 3. All right, so it goes right here. That's where it goes. And notice, it's from the y-intercept. That is vital. I promise you that's the biggest mistake the students make. So that's step two. Technically, there's a third step. And that's going to be draw the line that goes through what you just did from steps one and two. That's going to be our, our final step. And so we're going to make that green. Now, I'm going to point out, if you ever feel like you don't have enough points, maybe they're too close together and you don't think you have enough detail, feel free to keep graphing that slope. We went up 2 over 3. Feel free to do it again. Go up 1, 2, 1, 2, 3. Go up 2 over 3 again. You can keep doing it. In fact, you can do it again if you wanted to. And honestly, you can even do it in the other direction. You go from here and go down 2 and then left 3, so like this. So you can do the same thing. So you can find these locations. If you think you need more than one dot to make it clear, you can find them, and you'll be able to, and you'll work your way through it. All right, so let's get that line drawn. And remember, this line needs to go through all of those points. Or if you only had two points, I am perfectly fine. If you just have this point and this point, that is technically enough information. You only technically need two points to draw a line. So... Draw a line that goes through those locations, and once you do that, you are done. You have now graphed this equation. 
Now, I think many of you will agree this is a whole lot faster than having an input-output table, finding the X and Y intercepts, then drawing a line. This is a whole lot faster than that. This is what I mean by graphing. So in this example, I want you to write the equation of the line that has the slope of 3 and the y-intercept of negative 2. Take a moment to think about that. And remember, when you do this, identify what is m, what is b, then you literally just plug them in. So give this one a shot. Think about it for a moment. Or at least think about it. Okay, so our y-intercept is negative 2, so that means b is going to equal negative 2. And our slope is 3, so that means m is going to equal positive 3. So remember slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b. We're going to plug in for m and b. So y equals something x something. Now, m is the slope, so the 3 goes right in front of it, so it's 3x. Now, b is negative 2, so I mentioned earlier that means it's going to be minus 2. So after the x, minus 2. And now you're done. This is the equation of that information, a slope of 3, a y-intercept of negative 2. Now, let's say you wanted to graph these. Let's say your instruction was to graph them, but some questions will just say, what is the equation? You're done with this question. But now, if the question says to graph it, now it's time to make sure we graph it accurately. So if it's time to graph it, sketch yourself an x and y axis, and let's graph it. So draw your, draw your x and y axis, draw some little arrows on there because they go on forever technically. Now, let's follow those steps. We're going to put a dot at the y-intercept. Well, the y-intercept is negative 2. So that means put a dot at y equals negative 2. Step 2 was graph the slope from the y-intercept. So the slope is 3, but we did tend to need the slope to be, a, we need to be a fraction. So it's 3 over 1. Okay, so that means go up 3 over 1. So up 1, 2, 3 over 1. So right here, that's where our second dot's going to be. You now have enough information to go ahead and draw your line, and you're, and you're ready to go. So do your best to draw a line that goes through those points. That line should be about the size of your graph. That line should not just stop right here, just where those dots are. That would, be, that would not be accurate because technically that line keeps going on forever. Ideally, you need to be using graph paper and a ruler so that you can do this perfectly and go through those points exactly. So in this example, this was a two-part example, we wrote our own equation given certain information and we graphed that equation. Okay, so in each of these questions, for the top two questions, your goal is going to be write the equation of this line. Now, honestly, you can just do a quick sketch of these graphs. You don't have to put yours necessarily on graph paper for these questions. Like, literally, if you just do boom, 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 and go down to put a dot there, put a dot there, and draw your line. But just label those dots. Label what they are with the ordered pairs, 1, comma, 0, put parentheses around it. So, honestly, it doesn't, it's, it doesn't take forever to sketch these graphs. Obviously, I just did that in four seconds. You should take a little more time to do it, so yours is neater. So don't stress out about these graphs, but I do want you to have them because I want to make sure we can practice reading the graph to pick out the information we need. So for four and five, I want you, I understand this isn't our actual four and five, but for these two questions, I want you to um, write the equations for them. But you're going to need the information that we said we needed here. In order to graph, we need the slope and the y-intercept because they, they, that's how we got these values right here. So that's what you're going to do here. Find the slope and the y-intercept, and you'll be ready to go. So look at number four. Number four, the y-intercept is right here. It crosses the y-axis right there. Well, that value is negative two. So that means the number four, b, our y-intercept, is negative two. So our equation is going to end in something y equals something x minus two. That's how, it's going to end. That's how it's going to end. So I'm already going to write it. y equals something x and we just said minus 2. Now let's find out what that something is in front of it. That is the slope. You can pick any two points that this graph goes through. You can pick this point, this point. You can choose um, points that are furthest away. You'll just have to simplify. So it doesn't matter. So if you chose these two points, you can count. 1, 2, 3, 4. It goes up 4. So that means our slope goes up 4, so 4 goes on top. And it goes over 2. So it's 4 over 2. Oh, well, 4 over 2 simplifies. That simplifies to 2 over 1. And that simplifies to just 2. So that means our slope is 2. So that tells us our equation is y equals 2x minus 2. That's the answer to example number 4. That's how you find that equation. You're done. Now, I want you to take a moment. Hit pause if you need to. Take a moment and you try number 5 yourself. Press pause. Okay, number 5, let's do the exact same thing. Let's find the y-intercept and the slope. 
The y-intercept is the easiest one to find. Where it crosses the y-axis is right here. And that value is y equals 3. So that tells us our y-intercept is 3. So, that, so we already know our equation is going to have the format of y equals something x plus 3. Since it's positive 3, it's going to be plus 3. So plus 3. Now let's find what that something is in front of the x. We've got to find our slope. Pick any two points it goes through. You can pick this one and this one. So if you pick those, to get to that, it goes down 2. So m is going to be negative 2 up top. And it goes over 2. So negative 2 over 2. Well, negative 2 over 2, that simplifies to just negative 1. So our slope is negative 1. So our equation is y equals negative 1x plus 3, or that's also known as y equals negative x plus 3. Sometimes x won't have a coefficient. Anytime it's a 1 or a negative 1, it'll look just like this. Now, I want you to try 7 and 8 on your own. I want you to press pause. I want you to graph those. Ideally, you're using graph paper, so you can graph them exactly um, precise of how they appear with a ruler. And if you don't have a ruler, you can use the edge of another piece of paper, edge of a calculator, edge of your phone. If you're at home, you obviously can't do that in class. But regardless, you can graph each of these. So hit pause. Try number seven, at least number seven, and then see how you did. Okay, step one, let's find the y-intercept. The y-intercept is one. So that tells us b equals one. So that means go put a dot at the y-intercept of one. That was step one. Step two is identify the slope. Well, the slope is two. So that means up 2 over 1. So I'm just going to go ahead and put it over 1 now. So now, but now, but here was important. It said you had to graph the slope from the y-intercept. So from the y-intercept, go up 2 and then go over 1. So right there. So those are your two dots you're going to use to draw your graph. So then draw a line that goes through them. Sorry, that line was sloppy. thought I was using the line tool just now. Draw a line that goes through those dots. And now once you've done that, you're done. That's the graph of that equation number seven. Press pause and try number eight if you haven't done so already. Okay, and number eight, the y-intercept is two. So put a dot at y equals two. The slope is negative three. So because of that, that means it goes down three over one. So from the y-intercept, go down three over one. So oh, that was only down two just now. So one, two, three, and then over one. So be careful. I started, I started counting on the one I started at, and that would be incorrect. So anyways, once you have your two dots, you're ready to draw your line that goes through them. And then just draw your arrows on the end, and you're done. That's the, end. That's the graph of number 8. Okay, so essentially we accomplished our main goals. The bit about um, modeling real-world situations and scenarios, we're going to primarily focus on those in class. I'm not going to make you write out long word problems in your notes. But basically, they're going to be really similar to what we've already done. You're going to use our equation skills back in Chapter 2 to help us write equations to model word problems if they don't give us an equation. But notice, anytime you have a rate or something changing in a word problem, that's going to be our slope. That's going to be the number in front of x. Whatever that change happens to be in a word problem. And then we're going to do the exact same stuff, though. We're going to model them using graphs. And with graphs, we're going to be able to see patterns, trends. We can make predictions, stuff like that. So linear situations are a situation that have constant rates of change. And we're going to be able to model these types of situations with graphs and equations so that we can predict and, and be able to understand what's going on at any values, not just the values that are happening in that exact situation. All right, so make sure you have these notes. These are the steps we can go through for each one. Um, come to class, and we'll take it to the next level. Take care.